<sighs> you guys, it's okay, it's just a chair, come out. These are the shyest fish of life. Hey guys, it's Danny. Today it is time to address the discus tank, finally. Well, I have to say, I didn't plan necessarily on making this video now. It's only been around three months ever since I had them and I wanted to do this video at the six month mark. I think that would have been more appropriate. But if the universe has nothing against it for a change, we might actually be moving into our very own home, like in a couple of months, which is Oh my gosh, you guys, it's fantastic. But it also means that I will have to empty this tank in order to transport it there. I cannot transport it with anything inside. Might as well do this video now and tell you about the tank, how I thought about it. It's gonna be a bushy video. I'm gonna let you know because, hey, it's discus and it deserves a very thorough and bushy video. So I really wanna tell you guys how I thought about making this tank, how it works so far. Spoilers, I'm really happy about how it works and yeah, the, the level of maintenance that it requires from me, which is not that much. But I'll be honest, it's still kind of early and there are some things that I'll share towards the end that I do want to change. But mainly my approach really has been quite successful so far. So I want to get into all of that because discus and planted tanks, they're not really the norm. From what I see, they're kind of against the grain. And I just wanted to see if it's possible to have really good results in a different way. A way that is, let's say, more appropriate for me. So I'm gonna tell you all about that today, okay? Hang tight, it's, it's a bushy video. If I do forget something, which it's, it can happen, there's a lot of information that I wanna tell you. If I forget something, if I don't say something about something, leave me a comment and maybe we can do like a Q&A about this tank or something if you guys have a lot of questions, right? So first of all, my discus are spooked magooked. <laughs> These are the shyest fish I have ever, I have ever. Uh, they're used to me, per se. They know that I bring food and they're excited to see me. But if by chance I bring an object that does not belong here, such as the chair, especially one that makes vibrations, apocalypse now. That's why they're all like, I'm not here. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm gonna give you b-rolls of them being a little bit more normal. <laughs> Just so you know, this will not be a discus tutorial because I, I only have them for three months. I basically don't know much about them from my own experience and I just don't want to talk too much about other people's experience but we will touch base with a few like basic things about them because obviously this tank has to cater for their specific needs and I'm gonna reach to those things but yeah don't take discus advice from me I'm just here to tell you about how I thought about this tank how I like thought everything would work and how it actually works which thankfully they coincide so without further ado let's just start right let's start with why i chose to go the route of planted tanks because that is important what you should know about everything you want to do not only aquariums but like everything you do growing orchids whatever you should do things how you feel more comfortable with and for me my most comfortable zone is planted tanks i know water chemistry revolving around planted tanks or plants in a tank when it comes to bare rooted tanks and everything i don't have the best experience do you guys remember safi the crayfish yeah she chopped all of the plants that i ever tried to put in her tank and that tank was not not it the level of maintenance it required for me no it just didn't work out and I don't like them visually either. I prefer the look of planted tanks, but mainly the fact that I know more about planted tanks and in case something goes wrong, I know how to deal with it and I know how to act, that gives me more confidence because these are new fish for me, they're very expensive. So I didn't want to go into this like completely blind without knowing anything or having to go through so much maintenance that you know it's not realistic for me so i went with the approach that i know it's realistic for me i know that i'm more comfortable with uh, plants have always been like in my style pretty much for the past 20 years i've also had to sell plants like i know about plants and i know how to deal with a planted tank what i can rely on what i cannot what i need to be careful with and so on and so forth so pretty much that is the main reason why i went for a planted tank it would have been much cheaper to have it bare rooted with minimal decorations 
because the stuff I put in here for plants is not cheap. <laughs> um, so it would have been much cheaper, but it's just now my comfort zone and my experience with non-planted tanks is just not my forte. It, mm, no, it didn't work out. So I wanted to give myself more chances. And I think that's important in everything you do. If you're venturing into something new, maybe approach it in a way that is more familiar. Maybe, you know, that will work out for the best because at least you have some confidence. You're not like a deer in the headlights, pretty much. So that is the main reason. A second reason, of course, is the maintenance. Having a planted tank means less maintenance for reasons which I will get to. But yeah, I personally am not in that stage of my life where I can do daily water changes, which is not uncommon when you're growing or when you're keeping discus. Uh, there is a very big community which goes for daily water changes and maintains that daily water changes are the only way to success, which I disagree with, but I can see why they have to do daily changes. I do not want that life. <laughs> no, I cannot handle it. I'm not that type of person. Um, and I was confident that I can achieve the same results with a planted tank. And of course, the third reason, aesthetics. I much more prefer to look at something planted because I'm a plant person. You might know me from my orchid channel. I don't like non-planted stuff, I guess. So yeah, pretty much I just wanted to give myself the best chances that I could and I wanted to like what I was looking at. So in order to maintain the plants healthy and the fish healthy, I think it's a good idea to go into hardware now. So we're gonna go into equipment, substrate, all of those things. Let us start with the tank, shall we? So this is an Aquail Opti White or Opti Set 240. It is a one meter and 20 centimeter long tank that's four feet and I think it's 50 something centimeters high. Anyway, I'll put the measurements on the screen. I honestly was considering at some point to go and on an old ban of measurements on this channel because people get so hung up in measurements and I feel like they don't visualize what these measurements are that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna show you results without measurements because honestly, water chemistry is much more important than dimensions. Uh, but for the sake of being very like transparent with this video, I'm gonna give you all the dimensions and I'm gonna talk about dimensions and how they influence the tank at the end of the video. Right, so the tank also came with the stand, which I wanted it to be nice. I was thinking that at some point I will put this tank in my home, in my living room, and I wanted something nice to look at. It also has a lid, which again is something important because it helps me maintain high temperatures for these fish. It also slows down evaporation. And if I'm gonna have this tank in a house, you know, I don't want a lot of humidity in the air, which sometimes we do get high humidity as well. We're on an island here, so there are days which are kind of humid. I don't want extra humidity. Overall though, I'm happy with the lid because it hides the light and it also reduces evaporation, which is great. I never top up this vi video, this uh, aquarium, because it doesn't need it. I only do water changes, so that's great. So inside the lid, this tank also comes with two LED tubes. They are not my favorites. They're just daylight, kind of boring light. So what I did was I purchased two plant tubes from the same brand, Aquel brand. And that's what I'm running mainly. Now I have all four of them on for the sake of this video, but most days, and especially at the beginning, I only ran two of the LED bulbs. Really quick why that is. In the first phases of the tank, when the parameters are a little swingy swingy, it's not a good idea to over expose your aquarium to too much light because you're gonna get algae, most probably. And it becomes a snowball effect. If you get a lot of algae, your plants decline and then you get more algae and it's a whole fiasco. So in the beginnings of a tank, it's so much better to go for lower light. And when I say beginnings of a tank, I mean a few months, not just a few days. So I am only running two of them for eight hours a day, but sometimes on special occasions, I turn all four of them on because it looks nice. In the end, as the tank really ages, I will be able to use all four of them, but now it's not the time. Right, so that's pretty much the tank in a nutshell. The next piece of hardware is Objectively, it is the most important thing that I put on this tank and this is the filter. When you're dealing with big fish or a lot of fish in a tank or a lot of plants, you kind of need to have a very good filtration on your tank. And I was 
very stressed about it. In the end, I went with the OAC, OAC, I don't know how you pronounce it, Biomaster Thermo. It is the four, not four, the 800 one. And boy oh boy, I think it's one of the more expensive options out there, but I do not regret it. I am very happy with this filter, to be fully honest, and it is one of the reasons why I can maintain this aquarium, why it's easy for me to maintain it as well. It all has to do with that pre-filter. Enough said. I think that is genius. It's so easy to maintain this filter, and I'm not a person that likes to maintain external filters at all. At all. No. I'm not gonna go into the details why, but like my hands need hand cream. My hands really do not appreciate opening up filters and so on. And I am also the type of person who, if something doesn't flow, if something is not functional, I'm very tempted not to do it or to slack. So I knew this about myself. I knew that if the filter will not be easy to maintain, then the whole aquarium will not be easy to maintain. So I took a leap of faith and got the Oase filter, which is the more expensive option, as I was saying, but I really like it. I really do. It's a little loud, but other than that, I really like it. And I can go into more depth about it in a review video if you'd like, um, because there are some split opinions about this filter as well. I'm gonna tell you what I think about it if you'd like. For now, though, yeah, it's one of the main reasons this aquarium works, absolutely, hands down. And you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of the sadly, but this filter I, I really am a fan of. And of course the fact that it has the heater inside and it's not in the tank, it makes for a greater look, less cables in the back, and it's a good heater I find. It maintains temperature in my tank beautifully. And speaking about the temperature, I like to maintain between 29 and 30 degrees Celsius in this tank. In the summertime, it goes a little higher than that even because I live in a hot area and I don't need to use the heater, which is great. But in the winter months, I maintain it in between 29 and 30 and I find that that's good for my fish. Are you guys still skittish? <laughs> Look at them. I'm sorry, babies, come here. Oh gosh. I scared them with this chair because I made some vibrations that are not the usual and it's very dangerous at the moment. <laughs> All right, next piece of equipment is not necessary, but I'm using it. It is a surface skimmer. It is the one from Owase, which I already have a review on. It's not my favorite, to be fully honest, but there is no other setups in which I can use it because it has that evac on the bottom. So I cannot use it in my shallow. Can I use it in my cubes? I was using it in my uh, 80 liters in the 20 gallons, but it sucks in tiny fish. So I couldn't use it there either. In this tank, however, it's perfect because I don't have small fish here and it's tall enough for that uh, low or bottom evac to not disturb the potting, potting mix. Talking about aquariums, not our kids. It doesn't disturb the substrate, so it actually works okay. And the reason why I used it, at least in the beginning, was to remove that biofilm. At high temperatures, the oxygen in the water becomes less and less. And if you notice, I don't have any extra air pumps or anything of the sorts. I personally cannot stand them. I cannot stand the, the noise they make and so on. It has to be a very silent, very fine um, air pump for me to accept it pretty much to tolerate it. So I'm relying on the evac of the filter to splash a little bit on the surface of the water and oxygenate the water through the surface movement, but it's imperative not to have biofilm on top because biofilm seriously impairs gas exchange. So that's why I'm using a surface skimmer. I'll be honest though, sometimes the skimmer, the top part just falls down, even if it's not full or anything. So sometimes it's down and sometimes I don't notice it for like a couple of days and I'm like, oh no, the biofilm, but I don't see any biofilm on top anymore. So that's good. I think I can get away without the surface skimmer, but just to be sure that I don't have anything on the surface of the water, I do still run the surface skimmer. And especially with discus, if you don't have air pumps and stuff, it's a good idea to maintain the surface of the water clean of biofilm just so you don't impair gas exchange. All right, uh, I think, is that about it for the, oh, hi there. We're getting a little bit more courageous, I see. 
One thing I forgot to mention, it does pretty much nothing for the tang but it looks good, is the background. I'm using a frosted window film and behind it just an LED tube. This is an idea I've seen on YouTube quite a lot and this particular LED tube I found through MD Fish Tanks. So I'll link it down below to the tube itself, I got it on Amazon. It looks absolutely beautiful, I believe, and it's much much cheaper than buying an actual LED background. Quite considerably cheaper. And and almost similar results. Let me just check if I have any other electronics here that are working continuously. No, that's about it. Well, I have a thermometer, you can see it there, but that's about it when it comes to the electronics side, I think. I have something for the maintenance, but we're gonna get to that. Right, let's get into substrates and all of those things that are inside the tank. Well, because this was going to be a planted tank, of course I have a nutritious substrate. Now, leaving aesthetics aside, which I know, I, I know what the problem is here. I'm gonna avoid it in my next setup. Um, yeah, I needed a part of this tank to be nutritious and because you know how they say that discus tend to darken if the substrate is dark i made a sand uh, let's say island or portion in the front that is lighter colored just to maintain my fish bright it does not stay clean obviously this is the first time that i'm doing an islandscape and stuff and i thought well if i put some rocks there you know i don't have quarries so the soil will not just fall in front it does Anyway, um, so that's besides the point. I know the problem that I have here, but mainly for the plants I needed a nutritious substrate, which is in the back. And I opted for ADA. ADA in a discus tank. There is a reason for that. So I opted for power sand, well, the whole spiel with the tourmaline and everything. Everything in that line, um, back to 100, whatever, I had them from one of my aquascapes and I just used them, but I wanted to go for the Power Sand and the ADA Amazonia because in my experience, they are the most nutritious substrate combination that I've worked with. And it's not just for a few months, it's not initially, it's long term. I've had an aquarium run on that many years ago, run on the same, um, let's say, sandwich of a substrate for two years without skipping a beat. And in my experience with other brands and other substrates, that has not happened. I've always had to like add things to it. I've been able to always notice when plants would start to slow down and decline a little bit and like, oh, I have to insert some root taps and stuff. I did not want to go through that. I kind of wanted to use ADA because it's kind of like my preferred stuff to use and I knew I was going to use heavy heavy feeding plants so i didn't want to rely on the root tabs and like sand and stuff no i wanted heavy stuff i wanted the, the serious stuff so that's why i spent quite a bit of money on the substrate and now i have to remove everything so yeah that's the substrate part it is pretty much the top of the line why would i use it <laughs> like in a discus tank which is not even very 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 heavily planted if we think about a dutch whale I'm using this because the plants that I chose for this tank are very heavy root feeders. So just to wrap up the soil and substrate part and get to the plants part, in the front as I was saying I have some sand, it is actually the ADA, what's your name? The, the most common, most used sand they have, La Plata, is the La Plata sand beautiful sand beautiful absolutely if you have the money for it buy it um but yeah I, I don't think i'm gonna buy it again i think i can find some dupes for it so that's the substrate in a nutshell i do have some rocks with which i tried to make a separation between the soil and the sand and that didn't go too well i didn't actually have enough uh rocks and they weren't high enough you know th that's a design feature that me and designs you know sometimes we're not friends so i know what i did wrong there Maintenance wise, I always have to remove that soil from the sand and it's it's a pain and to be fully honest I don't know if it has an impact on the coloration of my fish, but I will I'll, we'll get to that towards the end of the video So in my next setup, I'm not gonna have the separation between the soil and the sand 
I have to think about what I'm gonna do but I think I know what I'm gonna do and it's not gonna be the same anyway so that's the substrate in a nutshell and look at that the video is almost 20 minutes long and I still have to go through choosing the plants and what plants do for the tank and water chemistry and the fish themselves uh, lots of things to talk about but we're gonna end today's video here I'm gonna continue next week with all of these chapters plus at the end of the video pros and cons of this plant to tank because nothing is perfect but in the end some cons of some setups might outweigh other cons of other setups right so we're gonna get to all of that in future episodes I feel like there will be two more episodes episodes of the saga but maybe we can insert some other types of videos in between i have a few other video ideas that i want to do so we'll see the saga will continue and in the meantime as i was saying i will have to start dismantling everything just to make it easier to move and not stress the fish with keeping them in bins and stuff for too long so maybe maybe i will get to experiment a little bit with planted bare bottom tanks as well I have an idea uh, so maybe for a few weeks or so before I move I can go and live the bare bottom experience that I called bare rooted in this video sorry uh, the orchid girl in me um, so yeah that's besides the point the video was filmed a week ago um, but I am doing things in the meantime We'll see how everything goes, but I will keep you up to date and I hope you've enjoyed today's video, which was kind of the introduction. We're gonna get to water chemistry, which is my favorite part. So stay tuned for that. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.